What's the best instant karma you've ever seen in a classroom? There was this kid, Jason, who thought he was the next Einstein. During our geometry test, he finished in 10 minutes, slammed his pencil down, and loudly announced, Done! Sarah next to him was still on problem three. Jason walked over to her desk. God, this is so easy a fifth grader could do it, he said, grabbing her paper. He scribbled something completely wrong and walked away laughing while Sarah started crying. The next day, Jason interrupted Mrs. Hensley during a lesson about triangles. Actually, there's a much faster way to solve this, he announced, marching to the board without permission. He drew some random lines and declared his method superior. Mrs. Hensley erased his work without a word. Jason protested loudly, claiming she was jealous of his intelligence and afraid of being shown up by a student. The breaking point came when Jason started bringing college textbooks to class. He'd slam them on his desk during quiet work time, flip pages loudly, and mutter things like, this middle school stuff is insulting my intelligence. When Tommy asked for help with fractions, Jason rolled his eyes so hard I thought they'd fall out. Fractions? Seriously? I'm working on differential equations here. Maybe try counting on your fingers first. During parent conferences, his mom stormed in demanding Jason be moved to advanced classes. Regular math is beneath him, she declared. He's been teaching himself calculus at home since he was 10. His dad chimed in, frankly, I think you're holding him back on purpose. Maybe you're not qualified to teach gifted students like our son. They demanded to speak to the principal immediately. They wanted Jason tested for the high school math program that same week. He's wasting away in this remedial environment, his mom snapped. You're stunting his intellectual growth, Mrs. Hensley smiled. I'll arrange something very special for Jason. The next Monday, she announced a surprise guest. Class, we have someone very special visiting today. A college-aged girl walked in. This is Jessica, captain of Roosevelt High's math team. She's here to scout potential candidates for their summer intensive program at the university. Jason waved both arms frantically. Me! Pick me! I've been ready for this my whole life! Mrs. Hensley nodded. Jason, you're always so confident about your abilities. Please, show Jessica what you can do. Jason strutted to the board. Jessica handed him the marker. Take your time, she said sweetly. The problem appeared on the smart board. Jason didn't even hesitate. He started writing immediately, narrating every step like he was filming a tutorial for idiots. See, this is obviously a simple integration by parts, he announced, drawing symbols that looked impressive to us seventh graders. Most people get confused here, but if you just remember the basic principles of calculus, Jason filled half the board with elaborate calculations. Now for the substitution, he continued, his voice getting louder. This is where it gets tricky for normal students, but watch this magic happen. He wrote another line of complex-looking equations. Jason stepped back from the board triumphantly. And there's your answer. He turned to the class with a huge grin. Any questions about my method? Jessica said, very impressive confidence, Jason. Jason beamed. Thanks. I've been working on advanced calculus all summer. Most kids my age couldn't even attempt this level of mathematics. Jessica said, you're absolutely right about that. In fact, this problem is typically given to college seniors in abstract algebra, and what you've written isn't mathematics at all. It's complete nonsense. The room went dead silent as Jessica continued. This was a number theory problem about prime factorization, not calculus. He never offered help again.